Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 1C. This is the last of three tutorials that are focused on notes payable. This particular tutorial and it will now focus on long-term interest-bearing notes payable. There's one learning objective for this tutorial and that's to review accounting for long-term interest-bearing notes that are greater than one year. As with the previous two uh, tutorials, 1A and 1B, we continue with the Olson Developments, Inc. or ODI, Notes Payable Problem. So again, please make sure that you have familiarized yourself with the information in that problem. This tutorial will now focus on resolving Requirement 3. And in this case, now we have some different assumptions. The land is purchased on January 1st, 2020. It's a two-year note that matures at December 31st, 2021, bearing interest at 8%. The effective market rate, however, is 6%, and ODI's year-end is still December 31st. We're going to ask you to prepare the journal entries related to the purchase, the interest payments, and the settlement of the note. And we'll presume here that interest is paid annually each December 31st. As the similar note in Tutorial 1B, here we have a situation where since the interest rate on the note of 8% is greater than the market rate or the implicit rate, this note now is offered at a premium. So the previous tutorial was based on a discount scenario. This time it's based on a premium. So let's get at it. On January 1st, 2020, we're going to debit the land for $32,100, and we'll see in a minute how that's determined. We'll credit cash for the $1,000 down payment and debit the note payable for 30,100 calculated as two years at 6%. This time we have an interest payment of $2,400 and that $2,400 is $30,000 times 8% and then a future value of 30,000. If we compute the present value, we get 31,100. And if we add those two together, that gives us the total purchase value of the land at 32,100. We start to keep track of a note payable account with a beginning balance of 30100 When that note matures somewhere at the end, this balance will have to be 30000 So that means we're going to need a series of debits corresponding to the amortization of the premium. Our next entry will be based on our first intervening year end at December 31st. We're going to set the entry up with the following accounts, a debit to interest expense, a debit to the note payable because we're going to have to record amortization of the premium and a credit to cash. The cash is the easiest piece. That's $2,400 that's paid annually. So there's our $2,400. Now we can calculate the interest expense of $1,866 to be based on the present value of the note that was set up originally, $30,100 times 6% times a full 12 out of 12 months. So that's how we end up with $1,866. And then the adjustment to make the journal entry balance. Of course, remember that our debits must equal our credits. 2400 minus 1866 is 534. That's going to be a debit to the note payable account. And the ending balance in the note payable is now 30,566. Now we proceed to the next year. This uh, December 31st, 2021, just prior to maturity and settlement of the note, we will record a debit to interest expense, a debit to note payable, and a credit to cash. The cash, uh, once again, is 2400 but the interest expense now is based on a 2020 ending balance of 30566 times 6% times a full year. That's where the 1834 comes in. The difference between the 2400 cash and the interest expense of 1,834 is 566, and that is the amount of the 2021 premium amortization. And when we do our math, the balance at the end of 2021 in the note payable is $30,000, which is exactly what we want it to be. Because now we can record the settlement of the note on the same December 31st, we can simply record a credit to cash and a debit to the note payable for 30,000 each, and our note is gone. Now we can finally wrap up with some key points to remember. First, any note payable longer than one year is recorded at its present value. Next, interest-bearing notes are discounted at their appropriate market rate, or the borrower's implicit or alternative borrowing rate. So in this situation, we used a discount rate of 6%. Of course, any interest expense must be accrued at every intervening year-end. 
notes where the stated or the face rate of interest is less than the implicit rate or offered at a discount. But in situations where the stated face is greater, and that was the case in this example, the stated rate is greater than the implicit rate, then we have a premium. Any premium or discount amortization is calculated as the difference between any cash interest paid and the calculated interest at the effective rate. And finally, accounting for interest bearing long term notes is the same under both ASPI and IFRS. Again, as mentioned in tutorial 1B, ASPI still does allow for the choice of using either the straight line or effective interest rate methods of amortizing discounts and premiums. Even under ASPI, however, the effective interest rate approach is recommended and preferred. This concludes tutorial 1C. If you'd like to review short term notes payable, you'll want to go back and review tutorial 1A. And if you want to look at non interest bearing long term notes payable, then please go back and review tutorial 1B.